Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the, the Friday, the Frivolous Friday edition, 593. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's May 1st, 2020. Okay, you know, at certain times I feel like I'm coming on the program and I'm like the captain on the ship from Wally where he comes on and every time it's just getting a little worse, a little worse. Finally, you can't come back to Earth because the, the trash here and the, the pollution is just too much. Well, that's how it feels coming on the news because it's it's getting worse. There's more and more people being laid off. Now some of my customers are laying off people and I don't like to... Uh, go through is the IT guy and uh, suspend accounts or delete uh, workers accounts because they're getting laid off it's, it's hard to do and George and I you know are very thoughtful and prayerful in, in this pandemic and we we feel for you um, if you want to add some prayer requests to emails and send it to Anglican TV at gmail.com you're welcome to do so or do so in the comments that's fine um, even though we're a little frivolous here on Friday and we got some fun news we want to report about, we understand the seriousness of this pandemic and its effects around the world. And uh, you, as an audience, are in our prayers. And we thank you for watching us and setting time aside uh, for Anglican Unscripted in your weekly lives. Let's get on to your responsibility. I need you to like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you don't want to see two guys on your YouTube screen, you can listen to the podcast. You'll find those all in the show notes. George, welcome back to the program. We kind of skipped Monday because uh, you were your doctor was doing tests on you calling, hey, I'll just change your medication. <laughs> yes, uh, I changed my blood pressure pills and we finally found the right combination of pills. I and But, but it for a few days, it just knocked me for a loop where everything was, where I it was even more groggy and foggy <laughs> and little discombobulated. It's like but slow mo, George. Ah, it's been a great week, Kevin. I, yeah, yeah, the world seems to be falling apart. The economy's <laughs> tanking. Uh, but I don't know. In my little corner of God's Green Acre, things are going pretty well. The, the county reopened the parks today. It's 72, no humidity, beautiful blue skies. The golf courses are open, except only one person in a cart, and you have to wear a mask. Uh, but, you know, it's we have escaped. Even though half the people here once lived in New York, in my county, <laughs> we have escaped the pandemic, pretty much so. Only 92 people in the county have come down with the illness, and only 11 have died. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's far different than up here in the Northeast. Obviously, if you guys watch the news, New York has been wiped out. Uh, Connecticut has the highest death rate per thousand, I think, uh, certainly in the top five. California is slowly recovering. New Jersey is slowly recovering. I mean, there's, as far as you look at the governors and the president and stuff like that, there seems to be, we've hit, it's not going to get any worse. We've hit the, the top of the apex. It's starting to, to curve down. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, you know, the economy will slowly come back. Uh, people's health will come back. Uh, we've discovered some pretty good treatment regimens. We don't have a cure yet. We don't have a vaccine. But now that people finally see that there's light at the end of the tunnel, you're seeing a little bit better response as to what we're going to do in our society here in Connecticut, they said sometime around May 20th, they're going to start allowing some businesses to open, like restaurants. You can open, but you can only serve outside. Oh, okay. Well, Monday, the restaurants reopen in Florida, and I think Susan's going to have me park outside her favorite <laughs> restaurant to be able to get a table. They can only seat, I think, a quarter or half capacity, mm -hmm. but the uh, we haven't had the shutdown that you've had in other places. So, uh, for instance, bicycle shops have been an essential business. Same here. And what that means is the bike trails are absolutely packed. And sometimes it looks like they're more crowded than the highways. So, it, but we're getting back to normalcy. Uh, we've not, we're still closed to the churches. And because most of our people are over 65, I've been polling our congregation 
and the wardens and I have been discussing it, and we're going to take the prudent, cautious approach. And the downside is people like the online services, <laughs> and so I have to continue doing that, even after we reopen for worship. And I just hope everybody comes back and doesn't just now think it's okay to come to church in your pajamas. Well, I get a lot of emails, Kevin, how do we transition back to services? People love that we Zoom, they love that we uh, have the ability to live stream on Facebook and YouTube. We actually we now have two cameras, we're doing multi-stuff, it's really fun. But we don't want people to get stuck on online services. How do we transition back? And I don't know when there will be an all clear in your state or your county or your city and stuff like that. But I think long term, a year from now, you can start weeding people off of Facebook Live by just providing a stream link for those who are truly homebound uh, worshipers, those who are truly sick and don't want to come back. The problem is you get uh, people like me, I'm afraid, afraid of the virus. I'm a little chunky, a little overweight, so the virus would, would ravage my body, according to the scientists, and I should stay away from crowded areas or places where I could get this uh, COVID-19. So, well, Kevin, that's why you and I film together, because I make you feel thin, so you <laughs> <Is that? laughs> make you feel thin and young and active and vibrant and alive. You don't make me feel like a hairy person, though. You know, I don't feel like Chewbacca. You got the hair. You're the theologian. Clearly, I'm the sex symbol. That's just how we have to work this show through. Uh, let's move on to some news. Uh, we're talking about the pandemic, its effects on the church. The New York Times ran an article three days ago that weddings have tanked. Weddings are at the lowest they've been since the, the start of weddings in, in Cana 2,000 some years ago. Well, yeah, maybe they're exaggerating a little bit. And that's true. I participated in a wedding because somebody said, Kevin, could you live stream our wedding? We have a priest and we have two people. They're gonna meet at the church, and but we wanna live stream this out to everybody who's out there who can't attend. Hundreds of people will watch, but there's only three people who are going to be at the church. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll live stream, not a big deal. Now, I'm reading about Zoom marriages. And this yeah. is going to be a really interesting topic. <laughs> well, the churches have, by and large, uh, taken a negative stance on live streaming the sacraments, or what they understand sure. to be the sacraments. So, for instance, the Archbishop of Southeast Asia, uh, I, yes, of Southeast Asia, uh, was asked by a Malaysian newspaper, "Can we have li can we have uh, Zoom or Facebook Live weddings where the priest is in one place and the couple are in another, and over the internet they can be married?" He said, "No, that's 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 a little too far for us. You can't. We can't. We're not going to do. You can watch the Eucharist." but you can't watch your own marriage. You have to be there to participate. Well, the Times of London had a story from Abu Dhabi of all places. The Anglican chaplaincy there performed a wedding of a couple and where the priest was in the church and the couple were at their house in Abu Dhabi and their friends from around the world participated in the wedding ceremony via Zoom. Now, I've written to the Archdeacon of, of the Gulf saying, was this okay with the bishop? Uh, because my initial reaction was, I don't know if I like this. Uh, <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable, you know. It's outside well, I mean, the rubric. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, it, more important to me than the Bible, more important to me than, than the revelation of Jesus Christ are the rubrics of the Book of Common Prayer. What do they say? And I can't find where... It, it doesn't say that the priest has to be in the same room, but it doesn't say he doesn't have to be in the same room. If if memory serves, well, actually, I'm worried about. Can I still get a fee? <laughs> yes, we did. Not not get paid. PayPal, come on! Before I say, well, if the bishop and the clergy can only do, I mean, your role is just to give nuptial blessings, right? More or less, yes. I mean, I start off, dearly beloved. I explain mm -hmm. the aims of marriage. We, I ask them their consent. So everybody hears that they don't have another wife. We're not Mormons or any place, sure. or we don't live in Southern California. Uh -huh. We have the Bible readings, and then I say the words, in the name of God, uh, do you, I, the husband, take you, the wife, to be my wife? 
And they repeat these words. I don't marry them. They marry each other. Correct. Now, that's not a, an extraordinary statement. That's always been stated. And then we have the prayers, and I lead the prayers. And you're right, Kevin. The only thing I have to do is the nuptial. If you can read this, the, nu uh, I, the uh, nuptial uh, blessing. Uh, and does the nuptial blessing have to be in person? Can you do it over Zoom? Can you do it over the phone? And I, I haven't really thought this one through, but I don't know if that's uh, a step I would take. Well, I am an Anglican because I love form and function. Anglicanism provides uh, both those very well. I'm comfortable with this. This is a pandemic. It's not a sacrament. There's no, it, as long as there's no Eucharist involved, you know, how can we, we deny two people from getting married? Uh, as long as they can get, you know, online. Now, obviously, this is a, uh, what they call it, a non-oppressed people group because they can access the internet. You know, these mm -hmm. are woke people. But uh, clearly, I, I don't have as much problem with it as some people would. Uh, well, as I said, I haven't thought through this, and I'm not a liturgist, meaning I'm a nice person liturgist. Sir. <laughs> well, we won't start on that point. Uh, but it really does ask the question, does a blessing have to be in person? Does, can it be remote? Does it, in other words, is there any, one of the joys of the Anglican way is that it's very tactile. I mean, mm. What does that mean? You touch, you feel, you touch the sacraments, you feel, you participate. I mean, it's more than just, we're not Quakers, for instance, where we just have it all in our head. Uh, our bodies are part of this as well. And I'm sure there's some very sophisticated body theologians who'll tell us why this is important, but from a traditional maybe habit perspective i just like to be there um okay well here i want to pull the audience uh clergy bishops uh clergy priests whatever go to the comments tell us what you would do if a couple said this is the only way we can get married uh we don't want to expose ourselves to the virus would you perform a marriage via zoom well see in the episcopal way and I know our Anglo-Catholic readers will get angry, but there are only two sacraments. There's, there's seven sacraments on, all told, but only two are from the Lord. The other five are imposed by the church. And the two that are from the Lord, baptism and communion, a priest does not have to baptize. A mm. layperson can baptize in the essence of a priest. Communion, except in Sydney, Australia, a priest <laughs> is necessary. <laughs> So marriage is not a sacrament in the same sense the, the, uh, in, the, in the traditional prayer book Anglican way that baptism and Eucharist are. So is a, is a priest absolutely necessary? Now in the rubrics, he must perform the nuptial blessing. But absent that, are we going to see a shift in the next prayer book or in the, <laughs> me, or in the understanding of the church? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is where you guys go to the comments and tell us what you would do. I, I, I'm going to be interested to see. I, I bet they all say, yes, we Zoom, or they all say, no, we won't Zoom. It's going to be interesting. Well, I guess I come down to it. So long as I get paid up front. <laughs> paid up front. <laughs> it's virtual, so I need PayPal. Okay, that's how it works. Now, for uh, our friends who have no sense of humor and cannot and do not understand Americans, we're having fun with this issue. Frivolous Friday. Frivolous frivolous um let's move on to our second story i'm not surprised it should have happened much sooner before the pandemic but the diocese of liverpool is furloughing some clergy what's the story there george junior clergy assistant priests have been asked to take a voluntary unpaid sabbatical and <laughs> In a hierarchy, this is like being a private in the army. You're, being, right. you're asked to volunteer for something. You don't volunteer. You're told you're volunteering. Basically, you're system. you're a red shirt in Star Trek. <laughs> Liverpool is one of the newer dioceses, meaning it's only about 130, 140 years old. It's not mm -hmm. one of the ancient ones, so it doesn't have a lot of inherited wealth. They have run out of money, and to make their balance budget balance, they are have asked uh, clergy who are paid out of central funds to take a sabbatical. The uh, 
of a diocese, Diocese of Oxford, is to, has had the senior clergy take a, a percentage pay cut, and have has asked some older senior clergy to to forego a cost of living increase. So we're in Oxford is one of the wealthier dioceses. The uh, church commissioners are making available seventy five million pounds to help the diocese uh, get through this point, but. We've reached a difficult time uh, when, uh, well, first off, if they're going to if they're going to furlough non-essential workers, I would start with the bishops. <laughs> because, seriously, I mean, no, the work, I mean, of the, yeah, church, the work of the church right now does not take place in the Episcopal offices. They certainly haven't been providing any leadership or charismatic. Uh, uh, no, no, I read an article it's... from Presiding Bishop Michael Curry. What would love do? I don't know. I just keep thinking of all when I see these things. I don't actually. I read them so you don't have to. That's right. <laughs> and and as you notice, I've not devoted any real time to Anglican ink on these because they're on par with sort of reruns of Love American style. I mean, it's right. that level of depth. Uh, <sighs> a pop psychology, pop culture. They're not bad. They're not. See, this is it, why it, I no, met Pastor it, Jeffrey Shorey, <laughs> because there would be such meat denying evil, it, denying it, God, it, denying it, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Those are really great stuff to wrestle with. No, because, my favorite, my favorite book from the seventies was *Up the Down Staircase*, and that's like reading all these things from uh, these psychobabbles in the Episcopal Church. I don't know. I just keep thinking of Jonathan Livingston Seagull when I read some of the presiding bishop stuff. It's that sort of pop 70s. Well, you know, maybe there's some people who like that, and maybe they still drive Volkswagen vans, but uh, I don't know. Uh, no. So I guess that's the news for today. We wanted to keep it short, frivolous, that you guys go on. It's going to be 70 degrees finally here in Connecticut tomorrow, so I'm going to go for a little bicycle ride out there in the, on the empty streets. Uh, wear my mask. Uh, George, you probably get your... I don't know if people know this, but you live on a golf course. Yes, I do. And and uh, as Kevin, when you were visiting in November, you <laughs> saw our golf ball collection. That's uh, right. You don't have any golf clubs, but you got plenty of... <laughs> no golf little, clubs, but I, every time I mow the grass, I pick up one, two, three golf balls. We're just off of the tee, and so if you... Sh if What is it? Shank it or shank uh, it. hook it? shank it to the left it'll because of where you are to shank yes uh, well. uh, but actually there is something i'd like our viewers read uh readers to do is what is your experience with reopening are you talking about it are you thinking about it are you going to wait and follow the curve are you going to be trailblazers or this we really are not how should i put this there's a lot that's not being reported I saw a little story about a Restoration Anglican Church in Arlington, Virginia. They put together their pastor, David Hankey, mm -hmm. I think Hankey, Hankey, uh, uh, has put together a coalition of nine other churches, and they've raised a quarter of a million dollars to help people pay rent. Um, that's an extraordinary story. It's amazing. Yeah. And I only saw it because uh, it was a local news item that somebody forwarded to me. There's so much good news happening uh, in this crisis on, at the church, on, at the grassroots, at the base level. I had a deacon, uh, Deacon Gale. She has a friend who's a farmer down around Lake Okeechobee. And her, they were chatting over the internet and she, he said, you know, I've got all these crops that have come in and they've been picked, but the canning plants are closed because of the, because of the virus. Uh, if you want to come down and get as many vegetables as you can load up in your car, come get them. And so she went down with the trailer, and basically we have enough uh, corn and uh, beans and whatnot picked uh, within the last week to f keep our food pantry packed for a few weeks, or as mm -hmm. long as the stuff is good. I mean, there's lots of good news stories out there, and, and the church is doing positive things. You'd always see on the national or in the diocesan news are poor Justin Welby looking like he's a hostage of the Iranians uh, in a dungeon. I don't, I don't... Somebody... Church House, stop him from making these videos. Please. For the love of God, he, he looks like he's an Iranian hostage, 
and he's in a cloak. He's not smiling. He's looking very sullen at the camera. Oh. No, I mean, all we need is Ted Koppel to do the introduction. You <laughs> it's know, right. it, it's really seriously. It's really on the Iranian hostage crisis. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm. This is what I wish to be, rather than what is. But yeah. I think that the the church has been such the church with, with the small c has been such an agent for positive and growth and good on the grassroots level during this crisis. Ninety eight percent of the parishes of which I'm aware have made the transition to online. Mm. They've not walked away. They've not sat in their hands. They've they're doing the best they can. It's just the establishment, the bishops, the institutions that are stuck in the collapse and failure and gloom. Well, I think the the leadership, the uh, presiding bishops and the uh, around the world are figuring out people really don't listen to them. You know, that the, the actual action of the church, as we learn from the 39 articles, happens amongst the membership. Mm -hmm. That's where that's where it's happening. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. I've covered our, our topics here. George, you have a great weekend. Kevin, What's, Indian yeah. corruption, any, any takers? No, no, no. This is Frivolous Friday. We'll do Serious Monday later. I'm Kevin Carlson. <laughs> I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 593 of Anglican Unscripted.